there's a reindeer fact to discuss over the holidays. Rudolph and the rest of Santa's reindeer would all be female, according to science. That's because female reindeer keep their antlers over the winter, but the males lose theirs. So where did we get the idea that Santa's reindeer are male, and what might that assumption reveal about us? The story of Santa Claus has been with us for centuries, but the flying reindeer don't show up until the 1800s. One of the first examples is the poem known as Twas the Night Before Christmas. And it names most of the reindeer, but it never says they're all male. And even though the song that you're probably singing in your head clearly says Rudolph is a he, reindeer are the only deer species where both males and females have antlers. Uh, where have they gone? That way. There we go. Can you, can you see? There you go. There you go. Santa screw with their antlers over Christmas. Would they be male or female? They would have to be female reindeer because the males actually lose their antlers after the rutting seasons between November and December time. Females keep their antlers until they've calved, which is in the springtime. We know that they're definitely all female. That's the science side of the way. Let's dig into our assumptions. Is there something about the work that Santa's reindeer do over Christmas that reads more traditionally male than female? Oh, definitely. I mean, it, it is so interesting. And I've been studying gender segregation and work for many years. The fact that they're doing outside labor, that they're involved in transportation services. Those are both very masculine typed areas. And these perceptions can change over time. For example, veterinarians used to be mostly men who took care of farm animals. Vets now look after pets and more women are going to veterinarian school. So that perception has now shifted. So it feels like we're having a conversation about reindeer, but we're not having a conversation about reindeer. Why does it matter that we think about this? Why is it important? You know, that's really a very interesting question is why we always feel we do have to gender things. And even like thinking about Frosty the Snowman, that there's Santa and Mrs. Santa. And even though many people have pushed against that now, um, it's still very hard to escape these gender roles. And so we see an enormous amount of gendering still in the workforce. And over Christmas, what is still overwhelmingly a woman's job is the mental orchestration of family life. Women remain kind of really responsible for this kind of knowing what needs doing. Women that I speak to, and we see this in other research, are more likely to send Christmas cards, buy Christmas presents, organize family gatherings, bring people together, do that sort of kin work. What does the research show that we can do to challenge these gender roles, whether it's in Santa's workshop or in any other workspace? The more you see people in what are non-traditional roles, um, including more presidents of countries, for instance, um, that I think helps because then it breaks down those stereotypes and makes it harder to say this is what men do and this is what women do. Obviously, we don't really always pay attention to these things, do we? We're just singing the song or we're making up the words as we think they are. So if we start the conversation about this over Christmas, it kind of talks to wider societal expectations of what you should be if they if people read you as a woman or if they read you as a man. Yeah, I think every everybody that I'm talking to about the story is going to have a very different Christmas <laughs> with conversations around <laughs> gender norms yeah. and assumptions that maybe we wouldn't have had before. And remember, you can't judge a reindeer just by their antlers. <laughs> Happy holidays! <gasps> Your nose is really wet!